listen here, people. GNR TV is just the thing to have. The streaming you should have right now. Let me tell you what it has. Let me tell you what it offers. For only $20 a month on two devices, you get over 2,000 channels, which includes pay-per-views, sports packages, movie channels, and all the regular channels you get with cable, including other states, other states' news channels, for example, all that good stuff. And what are you thinking right now? Well, why would I get it now when, you know, sports and pay-per-views really aren't happening? Well, it's going to start happening again, people. And on top of that, you got all the movie channels. So you can watch your HBO, Cinemax, Stars, all that stuff with GNR TV. And that's right, for only $20 a month with two devices. And if that doesn't get you to get it, being quarantined, being alone all day, yeah, give yourself some, you know, self-love. Well, they have an app. They have something for that as well in this app. It's called porn. And there is a ton of it. GNR TV streaming done right. $20 a month. You get all that awesome stuff. And I feel right after this video is over, you should go sign up and enjoy it. Oh, make sure you enjoy the rest of this video. Well, we are recording. This is my six figures. This is, this is my third video as far as pod, no, fourth technically, but third using Zoom. Fourth, this is the first one. Fourth using Zoom with the whole this. Doing the YouTube podcast. Podcast on YouTube. You guys are going to see. I'm not cutting this part out either. So, without further ado, you have my guy, Matt. AKA, you and your horror movies. Go check out his YouTube channel. It's fucking awesome. Great friend of mine. He's, he's my white brother. He's one of my other white brothers. <laughs> I'm sexual white chocolate. Thank you, sexual white chocolate. And it's funny you say that because when we were the, cho you know, the chocolate cowboys, <laughs> he was a part of that crew. <laughs> now we're the chocolate zombie killers. Mm -hmm. So it just goes. But yeah, man. Um, Again, for first, I want to say thank you again for coming on, as usual. No problem. Thank you for having me. Any fucking time, as you know. And we are going to be reviewing the movie, Ugly Sweater Party, a comedy horror movie. Of course, you guys all know how I feel about Felissa Rose. She's in this movie. I love it. Um, but before we get into that, Matt, I'm going to let you plug your channel after. But I want you to tell them about your channel right there, your YouTube channel and stuff like that, like what you do on there. Well, again, my uh, channel's called You and Your Horror Movies. <clears throat> I do movie reviews, uh, show off movie collections, show off horror collectibles and toys, uh, show off a lot of movies. I like to collect uh, movie on physical media. So, of course, DVD, Blu-ray. Yes. Starting to get a little into 4K, but even though I don't have a 4K TV or a player, it comes yeah. with a Blu-ray, so I figured, well, if I get that, then I'm at least somewhat caught up. <laughs> exactly. I'm glad you said that. I'm, this is why he's smart for doing this. You guys don't know Matt like I do. This motherfucker probably has six copies of like the same movie for like each. <laughs> they're, 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 I'm sure there's a few movies where you have multiple copies of. You have it on VHS, DVD, Blu-ray, and whatever came before VHS. He's old. <laughs> oh, I'm old. Who cares? Oh yeah, I do have a. There's a couple films that I have that I have multiple copies of, but. It's one of my if it's one of my favorite movies. I'm definitely keeping that copy. Oh, but yeah. keeping, I'll put it in a separate spot. But I always bust out the new edition, or if there's multiple editions, yeah, I'll probably have a couple, but not every single film. If it has a DVD and I upgrade to a Blu-ray, I get rid of the DVD unless it's like a certain film or not. Now, but as for comes. before that, like, what do you do as far as the what do you do? Do you give them away or do you trade them in the DVDs or you sell them? Um, I either trade them. I either trade them in for store credit in uh, like an FYE or a sound garden I go to in Syracuse. Mm -hmm. They take a lot in. And, uh, some I give away. Uh, a couple of times I've, I've done one contest on my channel. I should probably do another contest on that where I'll, I'll take a whole bunch and ask certain people questions and boom, here you go. 
or I said, my buddies will be okay. Want to watch this? Like, yeah, I like it. Here, keep it. I don't need it anymore. I don't try to sell them, you know, to make money. So maybe down the road, if I need the money, if I need the cash, but right now I'm all about trading in or giving it. Like that. Well, you know what you should do, which because I'm going to start doing announcements now, people. Brrr, big announcement. There we go. Like, as far as for my YouTube channel, my Facebook group and the page, even my Twitch, my gaming channel, a little bit, a little down the road, I'm going to start doing giveaways. And the way it's going to work is, you know, once I get X amount, it'll be like different giveaways. Like, say, for example, the, the, um, my YouTube channel, I have like 78, 79 subscribers. So I'm like, hey, once I get to 200 or more or something, I'll think of a number. Right, here's what I'm going to have a little stuff to give away. Here's what I'm going to give away. Here's how you can enter the contest for this. Make sure you subscribe. You have to be subscribed. Screenshot that you're subscribed or whatever. And then I'll figure something out after that. But do that to kind of help these numbers grow and just, you know, how it goes. I mean, I, I have so much fun doing this, you know, at the same time. Like, as you do, I know you, you have your, your other podcasts that you do, uh -huh. which you're going to be recording tonight, which you can let them in on that real, you know, let them in on that. And then we'll dive in. Okay. Uh, my other podcast is called Cinema Attack. It's on the Horrorphilia Network, where we pretty much dive into all different type of film genres, but mostly horror, because the other two guys and I are big horror fanatics. Mm -hmm. and once in a while, we'll talk about like a Western or like an action kung fu type film, but like we're doing three supernatural type horror films tonight. We're going to be doing Oculus, The Autopsy of Jane Doe, and one called I think it's In the Shadow. So, so far I've watched two. got to watch the third one. Nice, nice. <laughs> right into this podcast, probably. I, man, I hear you with that. I have, I'm actually on another show tomorrow. I'm on uh, Zombie Barbie soon. Oh, nice. You can... Yeah, she has her show, which we'll discuss more after we record. Okay. But, um... It's called Sinister Parlor, Sinister Parlor Podcast, and good show, fun show. I'm going to be on it tomorrow for the first, it'll be my first time on the show. And yeah, man, definitely, definitely check it out. I'll send you the links and stuff for that once we're going to record. But uh, yeah, so shout out to Sammy Barbie. I still talk to her on Instagram and whatnot, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, she's cool, man. We were just emailing earlier, just talking about the show tomorrow. We're doing um, Amityville Horror. Which one are we doing? This? There's so freaking many. There's a lot of them. <laughs> there is. She told me too. I just let me see if I can look that up really quick, and then we'll get right into these people. I promise. Look at you get to see this guy back here. This jackass is back. Skull guy back here. You've seen him in a couple of videos before. He has his own permanent seat. I did some. Um, I did a little upgrades, I guess you could say. Uh, for my, you know, my little area that I recorded. I did Makes a little bit more room because the screen was too close, so I moved it back further. And then, like, I don't know if you guys remember the the background I used to have, like some of my collect collection from back. I was back here, mm -hmm. like, over here now on the left. You don't really see. It. You're not gonna see it in camera. You see the bits and pieces and stuff as we like, reset up and stuff. But it was just because it just made more sense. I can move the screen further back. Everything's gonna look nicer. Everything's gonna look cleaner. Nice. You know, I you know I would be in my movie room, but. <laughs> I have no room. I'm still putting movies away for my last month's fall of February. Mm -hmm. I'm taking stuff out, putting stuff away, and right now that room is a disaster. So yes. I would, would be hanging this up in my movie room, but right now it's not happening. So I'm in the right. living room. Next time, man. It's called Amityville Horror. It's about time. Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't know if I've seen that one or not. So oh, I know, I know that one. I'll be in for a treat. And, yeah, we're doing it tomorrow, 7 o'clock Eastern time. So that'll be fun. That's uh, the clock one. That should be, that's a fun one. It's it's up there. <laughs> it's it's probably one, it's part of that group that was, uh, it's so bad, but it's actually good to watch. Okay. Like you got Dowhouse, It's About Time, and there was another one in that group. I forgot what it was, but. They're like late 90s Amityville horror films, direct to video, VHS release. And, See, uh, that's what I love about horror, though, man. Like, horror is the 
only genre you can say this movie is so bad, so terrible, it's good. Yes. Unless Nicolas Cage is fucking sucks. Fuck you. Oh, but, stop you and your Nicolas Cage. I can't help it, man. I seen the damn. I didn't watch the movie, but that movie he's gonna be in, or that movie he is in, Color. Oh, Color called. Out of Space. I just got it. I can't wait to watch it. One of my friends wants to do a podcast. I told him I would. And he knows how I feel about Nicolas Cage. The majority of you do. So I have to watch that. And the thing that bothers me is I know if he's in another horror movie, it's going to be you probably next time. Hey, here, we got to do this. <laughs> and I'm going to do it because it's horror. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, let's get into this movie, Ugly Sweater Party. I got it. Um, I did a, a trailer on it, a trailer review on it back in December. And I reached out to the director, I believe. Mm-hmm. Aaron? Oh, yes. Oh, we have the same first name. How the hell are I for this? Like that. <laughs> and I'm actually going to get him on one of these days for an interview. But I told cool. him. I ordered, as a matter of fact, I believe that same day that I dropped the video and the same day I talked to him, I ended up ordering the movie. And I got the, I got, I don't feel like right now, but I got the one with the sign, the signed copy of it. Oh, cool. Which was like oh. an extra ten bucks, I believe. Five or, yeah, I think I think the regular one was twenty five. It was Blu ray, and then the signed copy was thirty five. I was like, what? Why not? It's the cast signed it. It's it'd be more expensive for me to buy that twenty five bucks and go get everybody to sign it. Yeah, I think the signed one was out of stock, so I just bought the regular edition. So I just as long as I have it, I'm I'm good. I don't care if it's signed or not. It was a fun movie, though. I will say that entertaining. It's the type of movie where, like, if you're not into horror comedies, which I fucking love them, I know you love them, then you probably don't want to watch it. And I'm not going to, yeah. Like, my wife does not like horror comedies. Because when I told her I was getting ready to do this movie, she's like, <sighs> roll her eyes. Is this a horror comedy? <laughs> I was like, yeah. She's like, okay, I'm, I'm not going to watch it. I was like, yeah, no, I don't know. But I thought it was good. I thought it was funny. And I like the, um, the two main, the two first guys you meet. I just, oh yeah, the two friends there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. Hilarious duo. They have like a good back and forth chemistry as far as the way you would think a friendship would be. You know what I mean? The little back and forth thing. I liked how in the beginning of the movie, which I was confused. I ha- Well, first of all, I hated the part where the dude was shaving his pubes. <laughs> oh, and it landed in the cereal? That was, I was like, oh my god. And then he stepped the cereal too, yeah. Yep. He was hanging out. And then, like, his razor wasn't working, right? so he goes to borrow his friend's razor. And when he goes to the friend's room, it shows him, like, well, I'll say this. It shows him, like, dancing, and it shows the chick, like, dancing on his bed. Which was funny, right? So, like, what the hell's going on? I'm, like, I'm surprised they're not sleeping together. What's going on? And you find out he's sleep dancing <laughs> in the bathroom. I was so confused because you see him just standing there in the bathroom dancing. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Dry up in the air. Tearing that air up. Telling you, right, if air can get pregnant people, you would have got that air pregnant. (laughs) (laughs) What do you got to say about this one, though, Matt? Wow. Yeah, it starts off weird with the two guys. Well, actually, it starts off with the... um, gentleman in the chair with the two cops. Mm-hmm. And he's all wrapped up. And he's got, like, Nazi paraphernalia behind him. He's got his chain. And these two cops are, you know, talking. This, the, picking on the one cop because he's a rookie. You know, and all of a sudden, they start feeling how bad this guy is, how evil he is. He was actually yeah. played by uh, Sean Whalen. Yes. And people yeah. who don't know who Sean Whalen is, he was uh, the guy in People Wanted the Stairs. Was the one that was the gentleman in the walls with the tongue cut out. I forgot his name. What is the character's name? But Sean Whalen plays this mass murderer, and of course, the cops take their revenge out on him. But he gets a little trick because of what he's wearing. <laughs> he's wearing this weird sweater. And it's pretty much a possessed evil sweater. Yeah. That's, exactly, so, that's exactly what it is a possessed. Chris, ugly Christmas sweater. But. Yes. <clears throat> so now we fast forward to the two guys are talking about going to the party in the woods, and they're driving along. And he realizes his friend there is a complete idiot. It's funny as hell. 
he doesn't read all this texts and realizes, oh shit, this is a ugly sweater party. And of course, the one guy's going, what? Dumbass, I don't even have an ugly sweater. And of course, they mm-hmm. go in between. So, of course, they find the quote unquote killer ugly sweater on the bum who happens to be the cop from the beginning. <laughs> oh shit, you're right. And so, of course, they get the sweater, one puts it on and comes possessed, and of course, he's, you're seeing Sean Whalen's ghost in the whole movie. You know, tell him, you need to kill, drink blood, mm-hmm. and defeat me. So, of course, now you have a kind of like a slasher-esque uh, horror comedy coming up, um, where you have Felicia Rose, who is the side owner of this camp. <laughs> And of course, it's a uh, Bible camp. <laughs> oh God! And the, the jokes alone for the whole oh, shit was funny, and it's very stretched out on some of the stuff. Where some people were all like, you know, "quote unquote," they like, they love the Bible. They'll probably get offended by this, but this is funny. It's, it's a funny. Yeah, you, gotta, you gotta learn to laugh. You gotta loosen up, chill, and relax. But anyway, of course, the blood starts flying. People are getting murdered. It was, it was pretty funny. It was like I, it, I just really enjoyed it. I liked the cast, just how they kind of everybody kind of clicked. Everybody played their roles well in this, and it was just again, it's a horror comedy. You can't take it serious. It's one of these movies you just kind of turn your brain off and just enjoy. It. They did use practical kills, which I liked. There was some uh, CGI blood, unfortunately, but. They actually used fake blood a lot, too, and it was very bloody. So some gorehounds would definitely enjoy this. Uh, if you're a big metal fanatic, there was a band in there that played some pretty good music as well. Which I, I'm going to see if I can try to find. Because at the end of the movie, it says their album is coming out. It's like a real album. It's like a fake band. So i got to talk to Aaron to see if that's a real thing or not. So I'm friends with him through Instagram, so I'm going to ask him. Yeah, I am with him on Facebook. And... Again, like I said, I have the movie playing on mute. So I'm sorry you finished it. I mean, Felicia Rose again. She's in this movie I'm playing it right now. If I was, there she is, wearing some sunglasses, <laughs> some sort of glasses, blue ones. Oh yeah. But so, so got a good high body count, so you're not yes. going to be rejected on that. And you have another killer as well. So you have kind of like two different killers involved. They're kind of contradicting each other, and it's actually interesting how they played off. Like, how could a killer sweater be this evil? Well, mm-hmm. they actually introduced a lot with a uh, sweater possessing person, how it didn't morphs on the individual, which I really liked. How one guy, he did his first kill, like this glove came over his hand, mm-hmm. and it showed his hand like being covered. Like, the sweater was actually coming alive. Which I thought was awesome. Yeah, and like taking over his body. Like, literally taking over his body. As a matter when of fact, he was removing the sweater and his skin was coming off. That no, was great. I enjoyed that part. There's a part in the movie just now, it's like towards the beginning after Felicia Rolls hugs him. And he rolls up his sleeve and he's like peeling the sweater back right there. And he puts the sleeve back there. Oh shit. Yep. Yeah, there's a part where they lift up the sweater and it's like ripping off his skin off his stomach. Like oh. It's, it's attaching to it. Yep. That's when he thought he was going to get some. Yep. And it didn't happen like that. He ended up killing Felicia Rose, which. It was a rough part for me to watch, but it was still <laughs> it was an awesome kill. It was a cool kill, and I uh, I think like the way they did the movie too, as far as like which friend they chose to wear the sweater and all that, I think they did a good job with it because he was like kind of shy ish. In a sense, he seemed he seemed more. He, all right, put it this way: he may not have been shy, shy, but he was more reserved than his friend. A lot more reserved than his friend. He seemed like he was more of a a thinker, even mm-hmm. though he did shit, but he was more of like a thinker than his friend was. Like his friend was like, let's just go, let's do this, let's go to this party. Well, he was more smarter than his friend. His, smart, his friend was more like a stoner type dude. God, he's not reading his texts, he's not getting everything all set up. Yeah, uh, he did not read that text at all. Oh, he missed a lot. Which, so his other friend like was more like knowledgeable. He knows what yes. he wants. He knows what he's planning. He's kind of smart in some as a matter of fact, jumping back real quick with the whole ugly, because it's an ugly sweater party, 
they think they're just going to a party at first because the friend didn't read the whole text message. And he reads the text in the car. He reads, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, all sinners welcome. Ugly sweater party. And his friend gets mad. Like, what do you mean? Ugly sweater? I don't have a ugly sweater. And he's getting mad about that. And that's why they they end up attacking the homeless. Well, no, actually, they try to buy the sweater. The guy keeps telling them no. And he's, like, attacking the one friend. You know, he's, he's attacking the group of friends. So the other friend beats, him, beats his ass. Sweater. Yeah, because Sean Wyndham's ghost there is telling him to uh, take it, take the sweater. Really just take it. He, need, he needs that sweater so he can become more evolved and more tangible so he can kill more people and become what he wanted to become. Yes. And it happened. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely happened in so many awesome ways. It's just... Mm-hmm. It's one of these movies where I feel... Like, I know I can watch this again. If I watched it once today, I have it on for a second time on mute, just like, you know, kind of visualize it as we're discussing it. But, um, it's definitely one of those movies. It's a multiple watch movie, I would say. And it, it's. You it's definitely a Christmas it. movie, too. So, therefore, you can watch it during oh, Christmas oh. time. That takes yeah. place, like, in California, so there's no snow. But, yeah, it fit perfect. Take so, today's a beautiful day out. It's nice and sunny, but it's cold. It's not during Christmas, so fuck that, but it still works for a good time. <laughs> works for me. I, would hey, I don't care. I can I, watch a Christmas I, movie during the spring. Oh, hell yeah. I, but I would add this to my horror holiday. <laughs> my horror holiday lineup, I would add this movie to it. And, like, <laughs> it's, it's just so funny. Because you know what it is, too? You know what it makes me think of is, as far as, like, you know, we're both guys. As far as like when we come to making plans, there's times where we don't read a whole text message. You'll see, like, for example, if I text you and Henry, hey, let's game at such and such, and da 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 da, you guys will we'll all see, let's game at such and such a time, and not even read the rest of this part. Like, okay, that's it. And, you know, for an example, oh, that part was funny. Where the dude makes that face, I forgot what happened. <laughs> just kind of still for a couple seconds and it goes into a next shot of him and his friend walking to the, when they're going back to the car that scene because they were going to leave because they figured out it was a Bible party oh okay so they're heading back to the car and then Sean Wayne Ghost comes back out convinces one friend just stay just stay blah 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 just stay so he's like uh, we're going to stay I'm going to the car to get runners. And his friends like, grab a, bu- grab a bunch of rubber. Oh my god, this movie, man. And that first that kill there with the guy with the surfboard, that was the director of the movie. Really? Yep. Oh shit. That he was a, that was a fucking wild kill. He got his dick ripped off. Mm-hmm. Shoved in his mouth. Yes. And then <laughs> Oh my god, when the killer down and you know takes a load in the face. I started laughing. Like, oh, Not the load you guys are thinking of, though. People, it's actually blood a load. load. Yeah, because he needs to, to drink the blood of the killer of his victims to become stronger and more possessed. And in this, he needs three victims. So of course, the first one is the director. There he mm-hmm. comes out saying, "You know, I got paid fifty bucks by these sluts, and I can't wait to bang him again." Oh, and yeah. He's, of course, he has feelings for one of the girls. He's like, don't call her a slut. Rips off his dick. That's, that's brutal. I hope that never happens to anybody. Oh. Maybe R. Kelly. But people like that. But other people, no. Doesn't even happen to you guys. R. Kelly better watch out because he's peeing on everybody. That's why. It's already out. <laughs> Oh, man. For those of you who've never listened to the podcast before, you're in for a treat. Because this is how our conversations go. Matter of fact, I remember another episode with the Nightmare Shop. Before we dive back into this, oh, here's a dick ripping scene. He shoves it in his mouth. And now he gets that load of blood in his face. And he has the. If you've watched those kind of movies, you already know how that scene's going. It's just blood. But um, anyway, we're recording with the Nightmare Shop one day. 
and I don't know what the hell we were talking about, what we were talking about, but it ended up in the conversation how Freddy Krueger and R. Kelly are pretty much the same people. Oh, God. Yeah, I, I, that's all I'm going to say because I don't remember everything, but it was hilarious. I, I don't think I want to know. You've recorded with me plenty of times. So you already know how it can go. And you've recorded with them once, right? Or did yep. you? That was with, uh, with you guys. Fun times. The cook in this movie. <laughs> he was, what did they say? He was addicted to German porn or something? German porn. German Euro porn. And, uh, or Euro porn. Porn. And he was cook. He goes, how do you like my cinnamon buns? Yes. yes. <laughs> and What's the guy, with guacamole? Was, like, I'll take a try. That was funny because he was going to get the chip. He's like, yeah, we have our own personal chef here. He's like, oh, nice, nice. And he's grabbing some chips. And then he was like, yeah, he used to be addicted to you know, the Euro porn. And the guy was like, um, he's like, yeah, you want some guac? And he, as, as he's squeezing a lime over the guac, yeah, you want some guac? He's like, no, I'll, I'll eat these chips. Like, I'll eat them dry. He's like, oh, I just like my cinnamon ones. And it showed his face just like looking disgusted. I was like, yeah. that was so cool. That was so good. Like, I like the little, It's one. Of, it seems like it's like simple jokes in this movie, but they work so fucking well. Like, it, you don't want it to be like well thought out joke. You know what I mean? For this type of movie, you don't want it to be like too thought out kind of because it wouldn't work. But for this, it worked perfect. Then you got the eye like, fucking curling. Big ass arms and fucking Felic the guy who plays Felicity Rose's husband's like in love with him. Yep. Muscly dude. That's a good key, um affair. While Felicia Rose wants to bang the guys. It's like, oh I'm so <laughs> she gets all like hot and bothered. Yeah. The husband's like, Alright, whatever. I don't care. Yep. And their two daughters are the twins because those are the two guys that came to the party because they wanted to bang him. Again. And again. And uh, they're like, that's my daughter. Oh, then she's a great singer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Because he was asking about them. He's like, you know, the, the such and such twins? He's like, he called them the finger twins. He's like, the you know, finger, the finger twins. And he was like, those are my daughters. <clears throat> or no, because he, he mentioned the name, Samantha and Susan or something. He's like, yeah, the finger twins. He's like, those are my daughters. He's like, yeah, the finger twins. They're really good fingers. <laughs> I was rolling, man. That, that was great. Quick just, kind of feet thinking on that one. Yes, just like subtle stuff like little stuff like that where it's just quick, simple. It works so fucking well for this type of movie. And I like the part too where in the movie, uh the of course the friend's going around, he's game possessed. Mm -hmm. In one scene he's coming out with an axe. He's about to chop up his friend. And of course everyone screams, Oh my god, he has an axe and he started running. You know, thinking, okay, he's gonna start going on a killing spree. And he gets away. Then the next scene, he's like by a log. His friend looks over, and there there are parties. People. It's like, wait a minute. Did he just chase me with an axe? And now they're partying. That doesn't make sense. And I like how they included that this possessed evilness is kind of like changing time. So therefore, he's not really much affected because he has a good bond with his friend. But everyone else is affected by this kind of like a time change, time loop. Yeah. So it makes sense where now they're partying again versus it just happens. So I'm glad they added that little extra tidbit in there because it would not make sense in the movie. If someone was chasing me with an axe, my ass would be gone. Yeah, or fighting. fighting. One of the two. Uh, I'm going to go have some drinks or a tug of war or arm wrestling. But since it's now changing time, some people are affected more. So I'm glad they added that to the storyline, if not, you would have had some. Yeah, you would have had some holes or something. You know? But the uh, arm wrestle thing was another funny scene. Hmm. And Gregory Blair was in that scene. Yeah, shout out to Gregory Blair. Blair. Gregory Blair, you got a game on here. But it was funny because he was, you know, you got the, the father of the camp, the owner of the camp, or whatever. He was massaging the one dude's bicep. You get Gregory, Bla Gregory Blair rubbing the guy's chest. Gregory Blair. <laughs> Gregory Blair. <laughs> I'm having tough. Gregory Blair. Blair, Blair, Blair. There He's got a tongue twister of a name. Yes, he does. He's rubbing the dude's chest. And the dude's like, are we going to arm wrestle? Yeah, I was like, what? Oh, uh, okay. That was great. Of course, the girls are doing the tug of war and they're grabbing the rope going, oh, it's so hard. It's good slipping. Oh, 
So you got a lot of sexual innuendos going oh, for sure. Lady, throughout this whole entire yeah. movie. And as they're playing yeah. tug of war, I don't know if you noticed the one friend I was wearing all pink. The one friend he was like, damn, look at her grip. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. And the one oh. chick the one chick convinced him that he had herpes. <laughs> I like the part when the girls were saying they were born again virgins. And the guy's like, You got your badges tight? <laughs> that was, he was like, Hell yeah. All like, right. right. That, was, that was funny as hell on that part. So it's definitely a great horror comedy, especially if you like those sexual innuendo type jokes. Mm -hmm. It runs out through the whole entire movie. Yeah, it was a good, it was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. It was, it was good. It was really fun. It was funny. Um,. And like I said earlier, everybody like played their parts for it. Like everybody had the look that they needed for this movie. Everybody had like the acting. It just worked. It wasn't like I mean, it's not like an Oscar award winning movie. That's the right word, right? No, it's, it's a turn your it's like you said, turn your brain off type film. You know, but you're gonna have some good laughs. If you're like a stoner, this would be great by watching stoner drunk. <laughs> but <laughs> going back to that though, I'm not saying it as like a a diss to the movie. Because I enjoyed it, I really enjoyed this movie. I would watch this movie. The hell, out of, I would watch the hell out of this movie again. Henry, you need to see this. You will find this movie funny. The oh hell yeah! You know his sense of humor. It's like mine, yours. We have put it this way, people. We have the sense of humor of like twelve-year-old boys where we just laugh at everything, especially the inappropriate things. We still the laugh at fart jokes. Always make us laugh. Yeah, you should hear us when we're gaming. Hell oh, yeah. Laugh. It's ridiculous. It's like, oh, I shot a zombie in the nuts. Oh! <laughs> and we're well, like, what? It's funny you say that, though, because, like, when you, you know how when you get certain shots off in the world? Yes, yeah, so you can get that x-ray shot, and, like, you'll yeah. show them hitting him in the crotch. And it's a crotch shot. like, a pistol shot or something. I was dying. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm like, are you kidding me? They're actually doing this? Yeah. Like, I can see head shots. I can see, like, certain body shots. But a testicle nut shot? I don't, that was awesome. Like, all right. That was great. And it takes the zombies down, too. <laughs> takes them down. So, Matt, in this movie, would you survive? Who? Probably. I'll probably be a little more smarter than some of these. <laughs> Maybe. Because, I don't know. But I think I would survive. I would figure out what was going on or at least get away versus, oh, I don't think I'm going to praise God and get on my knees and hallelujah, Jesus. No. <laughs> like, that guy's coming with an axe. Fuck off. I'm out. Yeah, I would just, I'm, as soon as I see people dying, I'm just going to leave. I'm like, yo, look. So the problem is you got that time loop thing that's occurring. So would we be stuck in that time loop and forget about it? That's the hard part. Like, like, what's the distance? What's the range? So, therefore, would I be running far enough away not to get stuck in it? Or That's would all point. of a sudden you're, you're not too far, you're sucked back in, and you forget all about what happened? And you're like, ah, back to party. Right. I mean, maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll look out and get... Remember how he let the band members go? The band members? Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll look out and be able to do that. Well, the band members were also saying this, too. They were like a, a Satanistic metal band, so. Right. The guy's like, this is my camp now. Get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> they just walked out. I believe he called them. Uh, we'll see, see, get the fuck out of here. We'll see, see, they left. Yep. Because they wanted to take over the, uh, yeah. the camp. That's why they sent the groundskeeper. Put that fucking ray gun. <laughs> that gun was so fucking hilarious. It was so out of this world for this movie. It, it, it worked for this movie, but it was like one of those things that was just like so out there. Yeah, I was like, holy shit. Like, if this was, like, zombie alien killer, it would fit perfect with mm -hmm. the ray gun. But, no. <laughs> it was funny, though. It was, I loved it. I loved it. Like I said, you had the, the groundskeeper with this giant ray gun, which kind of, like, he needed them somewhat. You want to say, then also because he's going on doing a killing spree. This guy with the sweater is trying to kill people, and the guy with the sweater is like, fuck, he's ruining my plans. Mm -hmm. I gotta do something to stop him. 
So like the villain becomes the hero, and then also he's back to being the villain again. True, <laughs> true. But I did. I really did enjoy. I won't give much away because I don't really want to see this. But when he finally gets his third kill, when the the sweater does its final transformation, I like that a lot. There's a lot of cool practical effects. Oh yeah. But the sweater itself, how it morphed into this thing. I don't want to give. I don't want to say too much on it. But I enjoyed that. What it turned into your final, almost like your final look. Yeah. It would look like after it got its kills. Agreed. <laughs> it was really cool. It was real cool. And it was just like, come on, here's another one for you. That possessed, that sweater. It's ugly ass sweater. Mm-hmm. Both know this. Getting possessed by it. Would you have the willpower, the mind, whatever, to uh, fight it off? Well, first, I probably wouldn't even put on an ugly sweater, so therefore, I probably would never put it on. <laughs> I don't even own an ugly sweater. Wait a minute. Time out. Really quick. You're white, man. You mean to tell me you guys don't have these parties a lot? <laughs> I don't go to these parties. I've heard about these parties, but I've never been to them. Uh, would you go to one? Maybe. If, like, like, a bunch of my friends would do it, I would. What about a... Here, now, here's a good one. I know you'd go to this an ugly horror sweater party. That's a fucking bully. I know there's, best, there's websites that sell ugly horror sweaters. I, I buy one. one anyway. I want one. I really want one. Like, I want, like, a, a Jason. I've seen the Jasons. I've seen some like, uh, Freddy's, Michael Myers. Um, I, I technically have an ugly sweater t-shirt. <laughs> it's a t-shirt that's an ugly sweater. Horror but, box? Yep. Yes, I have that same one. Cthulhu, right? Yes, I have yep. that one. That's, yeah. I'm like, eh, I got that, but... <laughs> to actually own an ugly sweater in itself, I don't know. Not yet. I know my wife wouldn't go because for her, she's like a fashionista type thing. That's not fashionable for her, so she wouldn't wear one. <laughs> I don't know with my she might mine might go, but then again, she might be the same way. Like I'm not, I'm not buying. I'm not spending my money on that. But then again, you never know. Right. I th- I do think if it was like a horror thing, like say for example, if the Kinds had like a ugly horror sweater party, mm-hmm. I think she'd pretend, I think she'd do something like that. She probably wouldn't wear it. She'll make me wear it. But other than that, <laughs> yeah, but, but the thing is though. Do they really have to make us wear it? We're going to wear it anyways. For a matter of fact, we're going to wear it. And not just there, but other things. I'm, like, I'm not going there. I'm not going with you anywhere. Where is it? Like, I guess we're not going anywhere. I guess I'm staying guess home. Staying home. <laughs> All right, let's go off of the horror film, then. <laughs> my wife is like, take off that sweater right now. Yep, like, okay. Same way. Put, yep, it, put it back in the closet. Wear like, a different. Wear one of your hoodies or a different sweater. But not I'm, I'm already dressed. I'm comfortable. I won't wear this. You accepted me. You said I do. Yep. You accept this. You're stuck with me now. Guess what? Okay. You're stuck with my uh, movie Not attire. T- <laughs> You're stuck with my movie attire. I got my movie attire. Yes, it, 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 it just all combines in one. Oh, that would be such a fun. That'd be a fun thing to do. I know. I would definitely. But even my wife said she probably would buy a horror one. Would wear it like a Halloween party. Yeah, but like a normal a- Christmas ugly sweater. You know, but it feels like a Halloween. Horror related, probably. Yeah, it'll same. Be, it'll be a tough sell for her, but for me, if it's a horror one, yeah, it's easy. But I'll just put that in the closet and wear it in the winter time. Yep, <laughs> I would wear it during just during the winter, cold times, yeah. put it away for the summer. Yeah, hell yeah, holiday season, perfect time around Christmas, near Christmas, <laughs> even like Thanksgiving time. Sure, it's cold. Yeah, it's cool out. Got a turkey on there. Oh, <laughs> thanks, killing yeah, sweater. That would be awesome. We both had to see your look. I knew exactly what you were thinking when you saw Thanksgiving. You're like, turkey. <laughs> but you know how you know how much I love that ridiculous movie, man. Like, yep. I did two podcasts on that movie. Oh wow! Because I did one with you, and then I did a live like as we're watching the movie, like that show. What is it? Uh, what do you call that movie? That show that used to come on where they're reviewing movies. Oh, Mystery Science Theater. Oh, that. Like, when she started, it was me in the Nightmare Shop. We were doing it. <laughs> and it was ridiculous. 
was it was hilarious, but it was so ridiculous. That's the way it works. Yeah, but especially that, with that, those films. Yeah, I was gonna say we, I want to do that more, but more with those type of films, like the silly films that I've seen a bunch of times, where it's like you don't have to really be glued to the TV. You still kind of, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? But that was that was fun. Fucking Thanks Killing. By the way, if you haven't seen Thanks Killing yet, you need to go watch that right after you listen to this podcast. Or He's right. like the spokesman for this movie. So therefore, I, I love this movie. <laughs> and I'm not getting paid for this. I just really, really, really enjoy this movie. Like, and that's how and we met. That's yeah, the kind of talking say, about this movie. Me and Matt became friends because of this movie. It was funny. We were at uh, Empire State Comic Con up here in upstate New York, all the way in New York. Going to meet Robert England and Amanda Weiss, which she's so freaking amazing. So is Robert. He's awesome. But Amanda, just, I met her twice and she's just so sweet. Anyway, we're going there. Grab some horror stuff. So we were just talking horror. Like in the line, I was there helping my friend out, my friend Anthony, out with his podcast, Video Game Crosstalk. Again, as a Video Game Crosstalk, if you're a podcast fan, video game fan, video games, technology and science, go check it out. Anyway, I was there talking to him. Or no, I was helping him that weekend. So I had like a, I had a vendor pass or a media pass, type of thing. vendor, whatever. And I had passes for the weekend for my wife. And I had a pass for the weekend, like a VIP. No, you didn't have VIP, just regular. That's right. We didn't have the VIP. We didn't need it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we're just in line talking horror movies. And just randomly, t- I think we need to start randomly talking about horror movies. And I was like, hey, have you ever seen Thanks Killing? And boom. Right there, it was like, yeah, it was me, you, and there was one other guy there mm-hmm. that talked about the movie that enjoyed it. I wish I would have got his name and his information. I, I have it, so I'll give it to you later. Thank I you. thought I gave it to you. You might have, I don't remember. Probably I got not. his name. But anyway, me, you, and another gentleman were talking about the movie, and then some asshole in the red hoodie, oh, how can you watch that movie? I would never waste my time watching those kind of movies, da 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 which is fine. I mean, as far as, like, because we talk shit all the time. Like, I'll be like, hey, that movie sucked. Especially with Nicolas Cage. You, know, you guys hear how I talk about Nicolas Cage. But the thing was, one, he wasn't in, he wasn't in the conversation with us. And two, it was like, it was kind of like down talking. Like, I would, like, I'm too good for this kind of movie. I would never watch this. I can't watch B rated horror movies. Da 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 da. Like, okay, it's fine. Who really gives a shit? We just kind of ignored it. We kept going on with our conversation. <laughs> but the funny thing about this, the reason why I mentioned VIP, Get back into this later. Is the guy was like, what did he say? He was like, oh, you're you, talking you to guys, a lady. Because there was a lady there behind. Well, there was more than one lady. Because there was a lady that teaches other the kids. He was like, yeah. He was like, I got VIP. You should make sure you get VIP so you can because you're, you're guaranteed to get an autograph, get in line first. Da, 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 da. Weren't you like the first or second person to get your autograph? I was number one. And I beat VIP. Because right. this is a, he was all, he had a suitcase full of shit that signed by Robert Ingram. Now, we're all thinking, wow, you're going to sell that on eBay? He's like, no, I'm going to give it to my kids. Yeah, okay. And he's going to keep it. I'm going to collect it. I'm going to keep it. Da, 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 and pass it down. Mm-hmm. So, like, so, they, but if he did, that's fine. But yeah, kind of figure it. all that stuff, that's it's insane. Amazing. Usually when you go to a con, you bring one or two items. Especially if it's like your favorite. Uh, person, as you know, there's people going to be behind you, mm-hmm. and there's going to be people ahead of you. But if you bring a suitcase, I mean a fucking giant suitcase, no, it, was, get signed. Li- it was literally a suitcase, yeah. with, like the ones with the, the good, the hard ones with the wheels. It was one of those suitcases, and like, even if you did want to go get multiple things signed, that's cool, but, yeah. and if you want to sell it, that's cool too, I don't care. But it's like, just, just the way he came off was like, and real yeah. arrogant. Like, arrogant hey, yeah. We have to have the VIP thing. And, oh, yeah, He's like, we're oh, gonna we're going to be VIP. We're going to get ahead of everybody else. You know, when you get a con like this, you should get VIP because yeah. you jumped the line. But the thing is, though, at some cons, yeah, VIP can jump, but they get their own separate lines. Yes. Yeah, they don't and just get ahead of people. When we got to the doors, he said all VIP people had to go like say to the line. Everybody else was left. Mm-hmm. So first I made a beeline. I got up there, and your wife was right behind me. She told me exactly where to go. Yep. So, boom, it was like me, the other guy, and your wife was like right behind each other. <laughs> yep, yep. And uh, people at the desk said, okay, we're just about ready. Give us a couple minutes. I'm like, yeah, sure, no 
Oh, I got my, my laser just to get signed and everything. And mm -hmm. I'm hoping that that VIP dude didn't show up because of this giant suitcase because you got to wait there a while. It's just not so, fair for others. I understand you're there for your experience too, but you kind of kind of be a little considerate. You know, there's other people behind you. I would even but luckily he goes, all right, come on up first. I think I need the VIP. <laughs> get my papers, get my signature, talk with Robert Ingram for a few minutes, shake his hand, had an awesome experience that I'll never forget. Mm -hmm. And then I did Amanda Weiss right afterwards, then another gentleman. When I come back, the line's big, and there's Mr. Suitcase there going, Oh, I just got mine all signed. I'm like, I had mine signed not that, long, not that much ago, and I beat VIP. Yeah. So you don't I, need VIP. It's funny you say that, though, man, because. Well I, well, I mean, I had my media pass, so I, I, went up, I was up there way before VIP, so it's like, if you really want to be VIP, get a podcast, get a vendor table, and get up there an hour, hours before VIP can even go up there. You figure out where everything is. That's how my wife knew, because they let her come up with me. Yep. I was like, look, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm part of, you know, I'm here helping my friend with his table, but his wife, she's like, oh yeah, go ahead, coach. She's fine, go ahead and go up. So we went up, walked around. Seen where everything was. We showed her where I was going to be at most of because, like, oh, I was there that Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So most of that time, I was at the table helping my boy out. I would walk around when I could, but I, you know, so it was just. But I was going to say I don't remember seeing VIP from when we got upstairs. From when we left that little area, I I didn't see VIP for the rest of the day. Yeah, like but, people say, we'll get VIP. I kind of see like. With Cons. Oh, that's yeah. a great yeah. way to get VIP. You're allowed to like jump the line like, or for one for, line. Like, like I, we got VIP let for this past Scarecon in October, but we stayed out there for the weekend out in Rochester. And I think it's worth it. It's like I had one of the best times of my life at that con, and I think it's worth it because for that, like if they have the VIP experience and then where they have they have like open bar for two hours, you can hang out. With this, you don't have to drink, obviously, but I drink. <laughs> but no, you get to, just because you get to hang out with, with the celebrities, they let their hair down, they're more laid back and relaxed, and just chilling. And that that was like the that was the biggest reason that we did the VIP because we've never done it before. It was for that because as far as like sitting in front of the line, like you know how you know how with scare kind of how they have the panels and how the VIP section set off. Like we were on stage, me and Henry were on stage, so it's like it didn't matter anyway. And I had a meeting. And I had media passes, so my wife was going to be sitting up front anyway because she's part of the media thing. So it wasn't that big of a deal as far as <clears throat> as far as that goes. It was more of the experience with the celebrities I got. Because, again, I got to go in the con earlier because we got to go in there. You know, you go in there and you set up your tables or whatever the case may be, which I would do it again. As long as I have the funds, I would definitely, definitely do it again. I'll probably do it from now on if I can afford it. As long as I have, like, a VIP party. Thing. If it's just, like, a regular con where there's no extra stuff like that with the celebrities, and I don't care. But if it's just to get in line first, like, yo, we had our media passes and the, the VIP thing <clears throat> at this past Scarecon to get, and we could have got, we weren't even first in line to get pictures with Art the Clown, me and Henry, just because we're so, you know, just, you know how we are at cons. We're like kids in a candy store. Yep. You know, or R. Kelly at a middle school. We just, you're all over <laughs> the place. R. Kelly on the playground. Hey, hey who can I pee on today? All over the place, all excited and stuff, and it's like you guys want to see the human sprinkler. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! But uh, yeah. So <laughs> I was expecting. <laughs> no one ever does. Shit that comes out of my mouth, you never, no one ever mm -hmm. expects. I can't wait till the game later. I know it's gonna be something hilarious, ridiculous. Which, by the way, people, if you want to watch, if you want to hear this ridiculousness, you won't be able to see my face because I don't have my capture cards yet, but you'll be able to hear us all. Go to my Twitch channel. It's horror underscore with underscore sir underscore sturdy. We will be playing Zombie Army 4 later about 1 a.m. Eastern time. Between 12 and 1 a.m. Eastern time until whenever. Be ready for some laughs. Be ready for some immaturity. More than you, <laughs> even more than now because there's going to be three of us. Yeah, I'll see what time I get on after uh, recording with my show tonight. Oh, no problem. Just like I said, I, I know I'll be up. Just shoot me a text or I'll text you. Like, hey, I'll probably send you a regular, like how I always do. Hey, man, we're getting on. Da, 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 da. If we get off early, I'll get off. But I have an energy drink. I have my flight tonight. I have an energy drink. 
later, so I might take a nap. So I'll be up. <laughs> but jumping back to Ugly Sweater Party, how many ugly sweaters would you give this movie out of ten? All right. So you got to base this on like rewatchability. It was definitely goofy mm-hmm. and funny. Like definitely don't take if you take this serious movie, you're gonna get this. You think this movie's horrible. Oh yeah. So you just can't take this serious. It's a fun ass film. Get some blood guts. I probably give this one maybe seven to seven and a half out of ten of these sweaters. Uh, there could have been some more cool stuff, but again, it's an independent film. They have. Limited funds, they have limited budget. Uh, they can do what they need to do, like get stars to Chloe show for like a day or two, so they got to run time constraints and everything. So what he put together was fun. I definitely enjoyed it. I'd like to see a sequel, maybe another uh, ugly sweater party too, like you know, the knitting or something. And uh, <laughs> yeah, hey, I, I'm go here. from there. But yes, se- I will, I'll say seven, seven out of ten ugly sweaters. I'm actually going to go with you on that. For the same reasons, you had the blood, you had the guts. It's just one thing for me to give it an eight. That's the difference. You did have penis. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, unless you care about penis, then go ahead, bud. Yeah, Those boobs are a lot better. Yes, that would have bumped it up. Even though the dick kill, it was painful, it was hard to watch, but it was funny. Like, the funny part of it is when it was so disrespectful, like, he ripped his dick off and shoved it down his throat. That was and a cool kill. It was a great kill. But, again, Goobs would have given it an 8 for me. That's just an extra one point. Maybe even a 9. You know, because it's 12. But we'll see. Anyway, like I was saying, the movie was fucking... It was hilarious. It was fun. Great kills. I love the kill scenes. I love the blood in it. It's one of those movies where, as Matt was saying, it'd probably be a little bit more fun if you were intoxicated or drinking or whatever you do. If you're into that. If you're not into that, just drink. Yeah, that's what I do. I'm not a big drinker and I don't smoke, so therefore after watching I still had a good time watching. So oh, yeah, I had I a lot of both. fun. And I didn't actually I did have that strawberry milk I was drinking earlier. You had some um, you know a Bailey you know the Bailey Screamer and stuff? Yep, I know that's just, that's it was it was stuff. like that but a different brand. Okay. So I had that I did that with some almond milk and then some strawberry syrup to stir it up. And it didn't do nothing, but it was good. But um yeah, like I was saying, it was, I enjoyed the movie, like I said, it was a fun movie, loved the movie, definitely watch it again, and I really feel, if, if again, if you're into horror comedies, definitely, definitely check this movie out, you'll have a great freaking time with it. You can go to the Ugly Sweater Party Facebook page, and I believe they still, you can click a link there and still get it. I believe you can even get it on Amazon Prime, on Amazon, I believe, or, the, or is it just at their website, I don't remember. 100%. Look it up right now while you can. <laughs> and yeah, man, I, I, as you know, everybody that comes on this podcast, as far as like the people that are like the normal faces or normal, sorry, normal voices you hear, you'll hear, soon to be normal faces like Matt, Henry, Zombie Barbie, I'll say the Nightmare Shop, uh, the Bearded Weirdo, people like that, and plenty of others. Damn there, everybody, probably everybody, we're huge, huge, huge supporters of independent horror films. Huge supporters of independent horror films, so it's like one of those things where it's like, hey, I'm going to check this movie out. I'm going to, you know what I mean? Like, as a matter of fact, if you're a horror uh, director, producer, actor, actress, and you're going to be in an upcoming movie, shoot me an email, horrorwithsir.sturdy, again, it's horrorwithsir.sturdy at gmail.com, and See what we could do. Let's, you know, I would definitely love to review some more trailers. So I'm going to start reviewing more indie trailers and more Hollywood trailers. But I would love to inter- you know review your movie, review your trailer, get you on here for an interview. I'm sure Matt would love to have you on or come on with me to interview you guys and review your movies or maybe even on his show too. I don't know how it works over there, but definitely, definitely, definitely let's keep supporting this independent horror stuff because it's fucking amazing. It's the backbone of horror. And I, just from being like on, in a bunch of different horror groups and Facebook and stuff, you see, you see a lot of hate in these things, in these independent horror movies, like against each other. Stop all that bullshit. If you have issues with each other, just 
leave it at that. You don't have to discuss it. You don't have to post all over the place. It's nothing serious. Just leave it at that. Don't bash people's movies. Don't bash people's work as far as... I don't know. Because at the same time, I do review movies, and I will talk shit about a movie if I don't like it. But I will try to say something positive about it. You know, like I said with Mandy, I hated the movie, but Nicolas Cage had a cool shirt. There's your... You know, that's, that's, that's me being positive. Same with... um. Tales from the Hood 2. There's a cool jacket in there. He is the movie, but there's a cool jacket. Matt knows. He's, the, the thing that Matt's laughing like this because he's heard me with these rants and he's heard Henry with these rants so many fucking times. <laughs> and he's used to it. But, hey, we're growing. <laughs> Did you get the like Nicholas Cage? <laughs> <laughs> on Amazon, it's on Amazon Prime. Okay. But, but that's it. Um, so you probably have to either Look it up on Facebook or look up the director. I got it through the director, and uh, once I found him, he went to his web. He had like posted on his website where you can order the film. Yeah, if you if you go to the, I got it going through the Ugly Sweater Party Facebook page, and there's a link in there. So go to the Ugly Sweater Party Facebook page, and if they still have the Blu-rays, if they have, a, I'll say you this too, people. If you're a collector and you want a signed copy. If you have the money for it, get the signed copy. It's only like thirty-five bucks, and there's a bunch of autographs on it. Flossa Rose is one of them. I know you keep hearing me mention Flossa Rose, but again, you guys know how I feel about Flossa Rose. And uh, I mean, if you don't want the autograph copy, what's the other one? I believe it's like twenty-five bucks. So either either way, you're getting a fun fucking movie. You're getting a great fun film. Lots of laughs, lots of blood. Oh shit! We just got her head shot off. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> And it's just, again, support indie horror. We got to keep supporting indie horror. We got to keep supporting each other with our podcast, with our YouTube channel, mm. with our channels, all that the, stuff. Uh, the sign Blu ray is sold out. Sold but, out. but the regular Blu ray is on their website. Mm-hmm. And to their website, it's called Ocular Migraine Productions. How much is the movie? 25 bucks. That's, not bad. That's for the uh, Blu ray. And you have, it comes with like with trailers from other films. There is interviews with the cast on there. Um, yeah, I didn't even. There's a couple other special features, but that's not loaded with like a ton, but it's got some good ones. Like, I, I didn't even look at, there, there, I guess you can watch the movie with commentary. I didn't do that. Yeah. And I didn't look at the, I seen that there were special features, but I didn't even check those out, which I'm going to. But again, I mean, 25 bucks isn't bad for a movie plus shipping. It's just like going to Walmart and grabbing a movie. It's yeah. like, why not? Just grab an indie movie. And with indie, it helps support other people because later on they can put out something amazing. Amazing or crappy, you never know. That's yeah, what yeah, happens. Yeah. But you, you know what it is with the independent horror movies that I really, really enjoy and really love? Besides, like, that these are like real horror fans that are putting these things together. But I look at these movies as like, just imagine, as far as these directors that are just starting out, or these actors, actors that are just starting out, just imagine them say, keep, keep these movies and support them. Just imagine, one day we might see them on the big screen. And you're like, hey, i seen this person in this fucking movie, this first fucking movie. You go, and I'll tell you another thing. You go to a con, right? Say this is when they're bigger. You go to a con, and you're like, hey, let's just use Ugly Sweater Party, for example. Hey, i seen Ugly Sweater Party. Will you sign this? And you're like, holy shit, you really see me? Yeah. I've been following you since this. I'm a real fan. I'm not saying that other people aren't real fans. It's like, I'm really, like, I've been really following you since this. And, and, the, and sometimes the actors are like, oh, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> but other times they're like, oh, thank you. That's awesome. It's, yeah. it's weird. You get a cool, you get that cool uh, feeling with them. Oh, so yeah. one time when I met Linda Blair. Now, when I met Linda Blair at a Scaricon, of course, everyone was bringing Exorcist. Mm-hmm. Uh, Exorcist DVDs, VHS, all that shit. And of course, everyone's talking Exorcist. Well, I come up with it to her. I don't have an Exorcist film. I have this movie called um, Chiller, I think it is. And it's pretty much a frozen zombie. And she's oh. It's very obscure. And she looks at the mo- looks at me, looks at the movie. She's like, was this ever finished? <laughs> I go, yeah, it's a complete film. And she's like, I have never signed this movie before. I'm like, wow, this is pretty cool. So we actually had a cool conversation about another film that and I love doing that too the guests 
I always try to find something that will surprise them mm -hmm. to get signed. Because it's typical, everyone's going to bring like the same on. Majority of everybody's going to bring Friday the 13th. Yes. Or Hatchet. So, of course, those. There's a couple other ones I'm being up scared of. I'll try to find some weird Kane Hodder film that I know one's ever heard of. And being like, here's uh, Ed Keane, and he played it. Get this side. <laughs> Even though the movie was pretty bad. But we have a cool, like, we have this cool conversation, cool, like, icebreaker, cool uh, talk. No, get, there's a movie that I would actually, if I could, I'm going to see it again. I believe it's called 143, I believe. I could be wrong with Kane Hodder in it. And, um, if I found something from that, I would definitely get a sign by it. Like, I'm a, you already know I'm a big King Hunter fan. But, uh, yeah, I, I, that kind of stuff right there, though, is real. Like, shit. Fucking uh, Ron Bonk. House Shark. Mm -hmm. Another fucking movie I feel like everybody should see. I still have to watch She Kills so we can do a podcast on that, me and Henry. But, uh, me, Henry, and Matt, you know how you're, like, fans of somebody? How they I can't think of, like, the name. Like, Sure. Beyonce has the beehive. Rihanna has the army. Well, Ron Bonk, his last name is Bonk, we're bonkers. It's me, <laughs> me, Matt, and Henry are bonkers because we like his movies. I like seeing a lot of his movies so far, but I know I'm going to enjoy She Kills. I know you guys do. Uh, 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 Empire of the Dead, which is another anthology. I got I to gotta, I gotta check that out. But I, I just like how, like, from what I've seen, I like his thought process. And I've, I was on a um, panel with him as well. So I got to sit with him, be on this panel, and chat with him. And just, awesome. He's just, he's real cool, real down to earth. And he's from New York. We got to support from him. Syracuse. Oh. oh, and that Linda Blair movie was called The Chilling. Not The Chilling. Chilling. The Chilling. And I found it weird. I'm like, what is this? And of course, people are like, you know, chronic, gently frozen, the rich people. Mm -hmm. The lightning storm hits it, and all across, they all melt. Zombies, they start coming around, eating people, stabbing people. It's like a weird type of zombie film. And I had this cool conversation with the Blair about this movie. And she's like, It's <laughs> great. That's awesome. That's so freaking awesome. But that right there, though, I'm sure for something like that, for those people, it makes them feel like, Wow, this guy really is someone, or this guy really is a fan. Or this guy's really weird and creepy and he's stalking me. One of them. But to me, that's all compliments. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, thank you. All right. Please don't kill me in the parking lot, but thank you. Security, watch this guy over here, please. <laughs> yeah. uh, nope, this guy. Oh, man. It's just, uh, it's, it's, like I said, though, seriously, I, I love how horror just brings us all together. I said this plenty of times, and it's just, it's such a strange community as far as, like, if you're on the outside of it, because you feel like they watch these violent ass, crazy ass. Scary ass movies, but yet they're so fucking friendly. Yeah, this is what Com does. This is what keeps us sane. These horror movies. This is what keeps us sane. So yeah, watch more horror and enjoy it. Keep listening to the podcast. Keep start watching the podcast, Twitch channel, all that fun stuff. Check out what Madge is doing because he's doing some cool shit all the time. And uh, his elbows are good now, people. So we can stop worrying. I asked. See? <laughs> but uh, I guess we can kind of wrap it up, man. So you want to just go into your, your podcast again and then your YouTube channel? Right. Anything else you want to plug? All right. Again, that's uh, for podcasting. I'm on Cinema Attack on the Horrorphilia Network. We're a bunch of podcasters on there. I'll talk to different types of horror. Cinema Attack. For YouTube, it's uh, you and your horror movies. Also, I also have an Instagram account. Which is also you and your horror movies put all together in one word. Uh, Instagram didn't like spaces, so therefore it's all mixed together. So definitely check me out on Instagram. Uh, shoot me a message so like talk. Same thing with uh, YouTube. I pretty much answer the majority of all comments on my YouTube channel or the comment section. And uh, definitely check it out. You and your horror movies. And I'm going to say this right now, people. So you need to start paying attention to these videos and these podcasts that I'm putting out. I'm at 78 or 79 um, subscribers on my YouTube channel. Stop that shit. I'll see if I can send out a uh, shout out. To you some more. So I will say this right now. Matt, give me a number over 200. 
Over 200? Yeah, but nothing crazy, crazy. 222. 222. 222 subscribers. I will do a giveaway. I have no idea what yet. But I will be doing a little giveaway. It'll be worth it. Trust me on that. It will be worth it. But 220 subscribers to my YouTube channel. And there will be a giveaway. If you're Spanish, there'll be the dos, dos, dos. There you go. Dos, dos, dos. <laughs> I would say 222 in Spanish. I say dos, dos, dos. Two, two, two. Yes. So, yeah. There you have it. And I will also say this. Uh, nice. nice. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. That You're welcome. Like, that was good. That was good. Golf clap. Golf clap. And that was all. That was off of water. That wasn't no soda. Carbonation. But no, I will say this. Everybody that's been watching these videos that I do and listen to the podcast and Twitch and everything else and following the group, thank you so much. Please keep staying involved in all that stuff. Invite your friends to all this stuff. And again, 222 people, I'm not going to be doing a giveaway. I will also say this. You ready for it? If you want to be on the podcast, shoot me an email, horrorwithcert.sturdy. Again, it's horrorwithcert.sturdy at gmail.com. And we'll work something out. We can do a movie review if you have your own horror podcast. We can, I mean, we could do a movie review still. We can talk some random horror. If you're in movies, we can talk about that movie, interviews, and talk about what you're in. Just anything horror-related, pretty much. That goes for the group as well. If you want to post anything in the horror group, anything horror-related, we're cool with it. We love it. Share it in the group. Even if it's your own stuff, share it in the group. And just, yes, let's keep this horror thing going. Let's keep this horror train going. Choo-choo! Yeah, I said it. Choo-choo. So, yeah. Oh, and if you haven't seen it, Watch this movie I'm about to tell you to watch. You ready for it? It's a zombie movie. There's trains. Train to Busan. Watch that movie. It's an awesome fucking movie. Matt and Henry tried to tell me, have me watch it since the day that damn movie came out. I finally did at the beginning of this year, I believe. It was the end of last year. I don't remember. Either way, awesome movie. You guys were right. I'm not going to say I was wrong because I wasn't necessarily wrong and everything. I wouldn't watch it. But you guys were right for once. Awesome movie. So watch out. Watch that movie. Matt, you want to give these people one movie request or one movie? Uh, you know what I mean? Not request. A recommendation? Thank you. I knew it started with an R. <laughs> uh, let's see. What was. Well, if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend The Autopsy of Jane Doe. There you go. It's fucking awesome. I don't want to see much about it. Go in blind because uh, pretty much it's about an autopsy about this girl, but things just go fucking nuts and it's incredible. Highly recommend it. It's got some good special effects, uh, some good eeriness to it. Cinematography is awesome. So definitely check out the autopsy of Jane Doe. Uh, I think it came out a couple of years ago. I should have worn these to the whole video. I forgot I had these. Oh, God. <laughs> the cool thing about these people, this is like the last little bit, everything I see is like red. So, so these are red tinted glasses. So like the lights on the guy are red. Everything is red or like, I get like a red hue from red lookout from this. But like, yeah. Are those your wife's sunglasses? No, these are mine. <laughs> these are mine. They're awesome. They're amazing. Got them off of eBay. I paid ten dollars for them. The overpaid. Oh Hell yeah. <laughs> yes, they were worth it. There you Red. Go. Everybody knows red's my favorite color. If you didn't know, now you know. But yeah, again, Matt, thank you for coming on. No problem. Thank you. Had a great freaking time, as always. We'll be doing this again and again, people. Like I said, be prepared to see this face a lot more because from here on out. Important video for YouTube. So, and I will still have the audio on Podbean. Don't worry, I'm gonna have both. But I just felt, you know, I, I need the video. It's, it's fun. You can see how I react because there, there's times where me and I'm just gonna use Matt. For example, me and Matt will be talking, and we'll be, you know, on camera talking. Something funny will happen, but you don't really get to feel it or see it because you don't get to see our reactions to see what we're doing on camera because you know, we're 
part of that, it's just audio. So yeah, you get to see that now. So yeah, be ready for some craziness. And I'll say this again, if you ever want to be on this podcast, shoot me an email, horror with sir dot sturdy. Again, that's horror with sir dot sturdy at gmail.com. And we'll make it happen. Uh, what else? Facebook group, horror with sir sturdy, Facebook page, horror with sir sturdy. Give that a join, give that a like. Twitch, horror underscore with underscore sir underscore sturdy. Give that a friend request or a, give that a follow. Sir underscore sturdy is my PSN. If you're into these horror games that we play, hey, check it out. Join us to play some games with us. And, you know, that's all I got to say. Matt, thank you so much for coming on again. I had a great freaking time. I did too. We're about to wrap this up. So, as always, I'll see you in your night.